You're watching CBS On Demand. You're watching CBS On Demand. What do England's cheddar experts say about Wendy's cheddar lovers bacon cheeseburgers? It's really, really good. I just can't wait to bite into it. Not going to speak of secrets, are you? Well, I was trying to get my face round it, but it's uh, quite a job. I think mine's bigger than this. Winston, would you like one of the Wendy burgers? Yes. Yes. The flavour could be because nice and cheddar -y. Tomatoes. I say to me, it's really nice texture. Grumptious burger. Lots of little spiffing. Spiffing? Spiffing. That's lovely. Gorgeous. It's a hundred. Come and try Wendy's cheddar lovers bacon cheeseburger. That is very good for something from the colonies. We're the kids club kids, we just wanna have fun. So quick up kids, do a speed kids number one. The Burger King Kids Club, where it's cool to be a kid. Burger King has fun treasures for you. Well, I'm sure I'll bury the treasure around here. It's your favorite Disney characters like Goofy, Darkwing Duck, and Bob and cool Deep Toys. You can collect all five one in every kid's meal only at Burger King. Gorge, maybe I grabbed the wrong map. The Burger King Kids Club is a cool place. your way to glory with a toy based on Mario Kart 8 rated everyone in your McDonald's Happy Meal. <laughs> Saturday morning on Fox Kids. Those are here somewhere. Hello. Casper and his friends have taken over TV Land. In a frightfully funny new show. Somebody smell me. These ghosts are the most hidden, babe. Seeing is believing, so check it out. And see for yourself. Watch the all-new Casper Saturday morning on Fox Kids. Welcome back now. With the wave of a wand and the swish of a boom, the little charmers on, are ready to zoom. They've got powerful potions and wondrous spells that sometimes don't go so well. No matter what happens, the fun never ends. Awesome. When you've got the magic of best friends. Little Charmers, a brand new series, weekdays at 12 on Nickelodeon. Do we really have to choose him to be our next spokesperson? Seems like a good fit. But he's so boring. I'm yawning just talking about him. Well, it's our job to change that. Uh, guys, I think you can hear us.
Hmm. Sounds like you're on the fence. Why don't I just leave you my resume? <laughs> yes, it's laminated. No thanks. You're hired. Caramel has been square for far too long. Uh, ow? Try caramel M&M's. At Pizza Hut, the only person to touch your pizza once it leaves our 400-degree oven is you. Get our best delivery deal. Large pizzas with up to three toppings for just $9.99. Choose contactless delivery or new curbside pickup at PizzaHut.com. Your Saturdays will be rocking at Disney's House of Mouse. Where I'm looking. Looks like we got a full house. There have never been so many Disney stars together in one place. Table for a hundred and one. Oh, wow. Wait a minute, there's a fly in my friend's soap. I want one, too. Here's the doggy bag, Miss DeVille. Let's look at the bag. I'll take the doggy. <laughs> you just never know who'll show up. At the Disney House of Mouse. House of Mouse. Saturdays on ABC. Discovery Kids. Hola, soy Doki y vivo aquí en Discovery Kids. ¿Quieres jugar conmigo? <laughs> and now, our feature presentation. the best. Our kicker stubbed his toe on the ball. Our water boy's dehydrated, and pretty sure our mascot has this costume on backwards. This, this is our team. So we didn't win this one. We will win the next one. And if we don't win that one, we'll win the one after that. And if we don't win that one, we'll definitely probably win a game at some point in the future. And we'll be here when it happens. Because we're fans. And fans... They're always on their team's team, no matter what. Take better care of their room. 
Speaking of rooms, aren't these lovely? <laughs> Dear, just look at these lovely rooms. <laughs> what, what rooms? What rooms? Help! Where am I? These model treehouse rooms in Treehouse Keeping Magazine. Aren't they lovely? Oh, they're nice enough, I suppose, but certainly no lovelier than the rooms in our very own treehouse. This lovely, gracious, neat as a pin living room, cozy, warm, comfortable in the extreme. Oh, it's all right, I suppose. And our delightful dining room, a room to be proud of. Floor clean enough to eat off, not to mention the table. Yes, but and of course your wonderful spick and span, perfectly delicious kitchen, a model room if ever there was one. Yes, but yes, but what? Yes, but there's one place in this treehouse I'm not proud of. Brother and sister's room is a mess, a perfectly dreadful knockdown, dragout, wall-to-wall -wall mess. And I'm not going to stand for it any longer. I put up with that messy room long enough. <laughs> uh, well, dear, I've got some urgent work to do in my shop. You take your shot. We're playing tiddlywinks, not chess. Just hold your horses. I didn't get to be tiddlywinks champ of Bear Country School by rushing my shop. <laughs> What's that? An earthquake? It's Mama on the warpath. Climbing the stairs. Stomping along the hall. Pounding on the door. Come in. Nice collection of spiders you've got up here. Yes, they're very useful. They eat the ants that come in for food crumbs. Very clever. Isn't it hard to get around? I mean, in all this mess. Not really. Watch. Very impressive. How do you get this closet door open? To hang up your clothes, I mean. Well, we don't bother. We just sort of hang them in different places around the room. Most impressive. In fact, this is the most impressive mess I personally have ever seen. The filthiest, dirtiest, most disgusting mess known to bears. Unquestionably the number one messy room in all bear country. Destined to go down in the filthy dirty hall of fame. And I am just not going to take it any longer. I've had it. No more, Mrs. Nice Guy. The time has definitely come for me to put my foot down. Yeah. Yeah, Mama. You had a perfect right to put your foot down. But when you did it, you put it down right on my airplane cement. That does it. That does it. Now hear this. I want this entire room cleaned. And for starters, I want this entire floor picked up, picked up clean. And I want it done in exactly 15 minutes. 15 minutes? You heard me. 15 minutes. That stuff she picked up with her foot is a start. Look, we don't have time for smart remarks. You've got some heavy picking up to do. I've got some heavy picking up to do. How do you figure that? Most of this mess is yours. Oh, yeah? What about these? Your baseball cards? Your ball, bat, and glove? Oh, yeah? Well, what about these? Your farm animals? Your stuffed bunny? Well, 
If you're so smart, how am I supposed to sweep up with your dumb dinosaur toys all over the floor? They're not toys. They're models. And you leave them alone. I'm working on a setup of the Pleistocene Age. Pleistocene, Schmeistocene. That's what you get for kicking my stuff, Bunny. You know something? What? This isn't getting the job done. And the minutes are ticking by. We'd better get to work. Well, what do you think? What do I think? I think we're in big trouble. And the 15 minutes are almost up. What do we do? I'm thinking, I'm thinking. I'm thinking I have a creative idea. We sure could use one. Mama's going to have a fit if we don't get this whole mess off the floor and out of sight. Precisely. minutes. Time's up. Ta-da! This is wonderful. I can actually see the floor. Yeah, you can get around the room without a pogo stick. And look, with the floor clean, you can actually open the... No, Mama! Don't open it! Closet! the box for? It's for all this trash. No, Mama, no! My baseball cards aren't trash. All this good-for-nothing throwaway trash. That's not trash. That's my best doll. Not my coloring books and crayons. Help, help, please. Please, Mama, not my dinosaur collection. Stop! That's my first basement mitt. Help! Oh, no! for help. Well, the mess certainly has built up in this room. In fact, it's the worst case of messy buildup I've ever seen. Now let's sit down and talk this over calmly. So you see, this messy room isn't fair. It isn't fair to your mama and me. We have a lot of other things to take care of. But it isn't fair to you cubs, because you really can't have fun or relax in a room that's such a terrible mess. What you need is a little organization, and maybe a box. Not a trash box. No, what toy box? I'll make you one, and maybe a lot of other little boxes for your games and collections. And how about one of those boards with all the holes in it? Like you have in your shop. A pegboard. Good idea. Well, what do you think? What about the closet? Go ahead. Open it. I'm not sure I dare. Go ahead. Open it. Oh. Yes, indeed. A room and a closet to be proud of. What about us? Yeah. Aren't you proud of us, too? Absolutely. Puzzle-lutely. Hey, what about yours truly, Papa Q Bear? What do you think, Cubs? Should we keep old Papa Q? <laughs> yeah, let's keep him. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs>
pimples. Pimples? Ugh. Why do I always have pimples? I tried stuff at night. I tried scrubbing. Forget it. I used that stingy liquid stuff. And that prescription product says it could take weeks to work. <sighs> Don't get mad. Get Clearasil. Clearasil cream sucks up oil, then zaps pimples dry. The choice is clear. 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 The choice is clear. For clear skin, the choice is Clearasil. Come on, kids. Let's have an adventure. Wow, this wasn't here this morning. Look, Crystal. No, that's Bobby. This is Crystal. That's Mary Lou. <laughs> Ronald, this water makes music. Now we're playing by ear. <laughs> Come here. There's a McDonald's under our table. Sure. I thought we'd want lunch. Yeah. <laughs> Ronald makes it. Let's go see what's under my bed. Okay. Magic. Hi, I'm Sean. Hi, I'm Carla. Hi, I'm Curtis. And, and together, we're High Five! Passion! <laughs> Look, up in the sky, it's a 
action hero. If I'm gonna be an action hero, I'll need to be strong. Be that strong. If I'm gonna be an action hero, I'll need to be brave.
The trumpet that roared. What is it, Dee Dee? It's a big, giant concert called Trumpet Palooza. Cool! Oh, and look! Zimmy Zim Zam is going to be there. I think he's the greatest musician of all time. Really? Oh, Zimmy Zim Zam. I would have never guessed. We should play at this Trumpet Palooza. We can't. The rules say only bands with trumpet players can perform. Too bad none of us play the trumpet. Maybe Bop Bop can. <laughs> What's up? Surf's up, Doodle Dudes! Mel Snail, do you know anyone that can play the trumpet? Coming right up, Doodle Dudes! This girl's trumpet playing is awesome! Got a slide! Catch you on the flip side! Bye, Mel Snail! Snail. And thanks! Let's tune into the trumpet player that Mel Snail brought! <laughs> Little box. My name's Alice. Dee Dee, you're my favorite musician in the whole world. I want to know, do you like the trumpet? I love the trumpet! And Alice is awesome! Maybe she can play with us at Trumpet Palooza! What, what time, time is, it, is Bob? it, Bob? Time for Alice to get on the bus! Da 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 da! Do -do for a day! playing anything. She's just making the sound with her mouth. I can't actually play in front of people. I get kind of nervous. Especially in front of you, Dee Dee. It's okay. It's only stage fright. We have a song just for you, Alice. Step right up to the front of the stage where you can be a superstar. You don't have to be afraid to be who you are. Because you are Something special, a super duper wonderful you. So take a breath, relax yourself, and show what you can do. <laughs> That's okay. We know you're good, and we, we want, want you to play, play with us at Trumpet Palooza. Palooza. It would be the best thing ever to play with you guys. But my stage fright. How about we take you around so you can practice playing in front of people? You know, so you get used to it. I guess it's worth a try. And I know the perfect place to start. Buckle up, boppers. It's time to bada-bing, bada-zoom. First stop, Krabby Beach. Hey, Doodle Bops, what's going on? Hi, Hermit. This is Alice. Alice, this is Hermit the Crab. I'd shake your hands, but my claws are extra snippy today. 
Alice needs practice playing her trumpet in front of people, so we can play for Zimmy at Trumpet Palooza later. Trumpet? You don't hear one of those every day. Would you like to hear Alice play? I don't know, guys. We'll even stay on the bus. That way, it's just an audience of one. Hold on, special occasion. I don't get many visitors. Okay, hit it. I hope this works. I so want to play at Trumpet Palooza. Oh, Simmy Sim Zam. <laughs> Alice, you can do this. Close your eyes, take a deep breath, and just go for it. Good job! Oh, that was just great! Thank you for helping, Hermit. Let's hit our next stop! Welcome to our next stop, the Land of Noses. Hey, guys! Achoo! 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 That means hi in nose talk. You ready to play? I'm nervous. You know what the best thing about playing here is? The noses don't have ears. They can't hear if you make a mistake. <laughs> and we'll go high, so no pressure. Close your eyes, take a deep breath, and just go for it. I can do this. I can totally do this. All I have to do is try. <laughs> Alice, that was doodle-rific. Whoa, the time. Doodles, we gotta get the trumpet palooza now. You ready, Alice? So ready. Smell you later. Ready to rock, Alice? Whoa. D, you okay? Excuse me? All right, thank you! Thank you! Thank you very much! And now, please welcome to the stage some very good friends of mine, the Doodle Bobs and Alice! You ready to knock him dead out there? Well, was he my gimabalo right back at you? <laughs> Howdy, I'm Zimmy. Hi. Alice was a little nervous about performing today. Oh, that's just stage fright. Don't let it get you down. You just got to turn that stage fright into stage mind. Let's do this. Dee Dee, what's wrong? I can't play. Zimmy's right there. I'm totally worried. He's my hero. What if I play the wrong note? But you're Dee Dee Toodle. You've played like a million concerts before. All you have to do is close your eyes, take a deep breath, relax, and just go for it. Actually, there is one thing to worry about. Where's Mo? Where's Mo? Where's Mo? Where's his Mo? Where's his Mo? A one, two, three, four! Step right up to the front of the stage where you can be a superstar. You don't have to be afraid to be who you are. Cause you are something special, a super duper wonderful you. So take a breath, relax yourself, and show what you can do. Stay loose 
It never stops showing everyone. Fun, fun, fun at the front of the stage, feeling like a superstar. You're never gonna be afraid to be who you are. To be who you are You're never gonna be afraid To be who you are Woohoo! Hey Doodles, we got a message from Alice Hey Doodlebox, I had the best time ever playing with you guys And now, I'm not afraid to play in front of people Oh, and Dee Dee? Thanks for the autograph poster. Alice has a poster of me on her wall because she thinks I rock. I have a poster of Zimmy on my wall because I think he rocks. I wonder who Zimmy has a picture of. Yeah, lovely, lovely. <laughs> Mouthful of tea. Can I get your autograph? Yeah! Yes. Oh, beautiful! Thanks. Thanks! Hey, Room! That was really nice of you guys! Yeah! Our fans are awesome! There! Looking good, Bob Bob! That reminds me, don't we have that photo shoot later? I totally forgot! And we have to look our best! I can help with that! One doodorific dress up table coming up! What do you think of this one? Or this one? Good call. Maybe we should practice our poses. Sounds good to me. Kind of busy right now. Can't we do it later? We sort of have to make time for it now. Fine, but quick. I got to get back to practicing. What's up? Mo, you didn't smile once. You have to smile. Come on, Mo. It's not that hard. Hey, come on. Ah! Whoa, you seriously need to brush, dude. I don't have time for small things like brushing my teeth. I've been busy with the real important stuff, like practicing my drums. But, Mo, brushing your teeth is also important. I'll do it later. It's so tricky. Snail snail! Snail snail! Snail snail! Mail snail. <laughs> hey, hey! What's up? Get your mail, doodle dude. Get it while it's cool. Thanks, mail snail. No problem. I'd love to stay and chat, but I've got a wave to ride and more mail to deliver. Got a slide. Catch you on the flip side. Bye, Bye mail snail. snail. Let's see what Mail Snail has brought us today. Hi, Doodle Box. My name is Adam. The dentist told me I had to brush my teeth twice a day. But hey, I'm a busy guy. Do I really have to brush my teeth that much? What if we doodlefy Adam and show him Mo's teeth? Good idea. He'll take one look and never take the toothbrush out of his mouth. What? What time, time is, is it, Bob? Bob? Time for Adam to get on the bus. Da 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 da. Doodle for a day. For a day? Sweet! Whoa! 
What happened to your teeth, dude? He's too busy to brush. That's not gonna happen to my teeth, is it? It could if you don't make time to brush. For real? Uh-huh. If you think that's bad, you should meet my friend Geraldo. P-U-E! Who's Geraldo? Oh, he's a giant I know. Buckle up, boppers. It's time to bada-bing, bada-zoom! Next stop, Land of the Giants! If you look on your right, you'll see Tiny City. Hey, you On your left, well, that's just normal-sized city. But up ahead is the Land of the Giants. There's Geraldo. Brace yourselves. His breath is worse than mine after a meatball sub with extra onions. Hey, Geraldo! Geraldo! Hey, big guy! The tractor's way too loud. He can't hear us. I know how to get his attention. Up speaker, please, Bob! Brush, 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 brush your teeth. Up and down and all around and in between, yeah! Brush, 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 brush your teeth. Side to side and inside out. Squeaky clean! Ugh, leave me alone, horse flies! Geraldo! Hey, wait! Come back! Geraldo, it's us, the Doodle Bop! Oh, howdy there! Awful sorry about that, little partners. But I reckon you caught me at a bad time. How come? Yeah, what's up? Normally, I love to sing and play with you all day long, but it's harvest time, and this cowboy's mucho busy. But you can still help us out. Anything for a lovely lady. We want to see what happens inside a mouth when you don't brush. Who has time to brush your teeth when you're always milking cows and plowing fields? And drumming. Ah. Tell you what, I'll let you have a look around inside my mouth because maybe you can tell me why my teeth are hurting. Sure, we'll have a look around. Thanks, Geraldo. <laughs> That's a tickly. <laughs> This place smells kind of gross. This is what happens when you don't brush your teeth. But why? Yeah, why? That's why. Because food gets stuck between your teeth. Give me a hand, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Spread out. <laughs> it's the decayers. They like leftover food a lot. Let's get to work. If we keep this up, we, the Decayers, can finally turn this place into Cavity City. Then, bye-bye, Teeth. Oh, yeah? When we tell Geraldo what's going on in here, he'll brush you guys right out. No way. Geraldo is way too busy to brush. It's harvest season. Well, he's gonna have to make time. Yeah, make time. <laughs> Wait a minute. Make time to brush? What am I saying? Hey, everybody. I just heard from the photographer. We better go, guys. All aboard. Time to go. But the decayers. Come on. We'll tell Geraldo before we leave. Howdy, doodles. Just milking old Betsy. We found out why your mouth is a hurting. Yeah, there's a whole lot of decayers in there, man. Making cavities. Those are big holes in your teeth. And a whole bunch more decayers are coming. You better brush your teeth. Man, why do I keep saying that? Caramba, what do I need to do? It's time for you to make friends with the toothbrush. Whatever you do, make it quick. We're going to be late for our photo shoot. Not a problem, Doodles. I figured we'd be running late. So instead of going to the photographer, the photographer is coming to us. Doodles, this is Filmy McClick. Mr. McClick, I'm ready for my close-up. I know, I know. I need to brush, but I forgot my... I'm on it. Right with you, buddy. Me too. Oh, it's Betsy. Ah! How 
do they look? Great is how they look. Brush, 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 brush your teeth. Up and down and all around and in between, yeah. Brush, 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 brush your teeth. Side to side and inside out. Squeaky clean. Take good care of your smile. And it'll be good to you. It only takes a little while. But it's so important to brush, brush, brush. Brush, 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 brush your teeth. Up and down and all around and in between, yeah. Brush, 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 brush your teeth. Side to side and inside out. Squeaky clean. Brush, 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 brush your teeth. Up and down and all around and in between, yeah. Brush, 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 brush your teeth. Side to side and inside out. Squeaky clean. Brush your teeth. The cover came out great. It sure did. And in the end, we had time to do it all. Thanks for helping a fellow out there, Doodle Bops. I'm sporting a shiny set of teeth now. <laughs> and so is old Betsy. Hey, Doodles. Incoming message from Adam. Hi, Doodle Bops. Thanks for such a fun day. And surely what can happen when you never brush your teeth? Looks like the decayers won't be making cavities in Adam's teeth. Now we all have something to smile about. <laughs> <laughs> we promise to share, we promise to care, all together as a team. Just stick to it, we can do it, we can do anything. Stand tall, say it loud, we're together and we're proud. Dee Dee! Rooney! Mo! Yeah! We're the Doodle Bops! We promise to share. We promise to care. All together as a team. Just stick to it. We can do it. We can do anything. Yeah! We're the Doodle Bops! Cookie jar! <laughs> Addison Holly, and I'm 14 years old, and I play Anne on Androids. Four take two. Anne, your friends are here. Hi, guys. 
Anne is a genius who lives in a junkyard with her dad and her androids and robots and all her other creations. She's scared that if someone finds out about the androids that they might want to take them away. And that's the main thing about her androids. She doesn't want anyone to find out about them. You know, they're all our friends and they're like, they're not just androids to me, they're like my family. Previously on Androids. This is the best gymnastics robot I've ever seen. <laughs> Can you see it too, Anne? Here comes the little tag. Oh, Anne, you need to be more careful. Maybe I should have let Pal do it. Pal can be a bit more gentle. Oh, no. An android temper tantrum. But I do need you. You can do so much no one else can. You get stuff from high places. You're the strongest of all of us. And you give the best hugs. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Ready to record, I? Now all I need is my walkie talkie. What's my little Einstein up to today? Okay. Hi, Dad. I'm testing my latest Android upgrade. Sounds promising. What is it? I'll let Hand show you. <laughs> is it in antenna mode? Close. It's a walkie-talkie mode. <laughs> Since walkie-talkies work by sending messages through the air, I upgraded hand with one so we can keep in touch across the junkyard. Smart thinking. Hey, I was just gonna do some gardening. You haven't seen my gardening trowel, weeder, shear, spade, or hedge trimmer, have you? I haven't. Ah. Oh. But why don't you check the organic growth facility? Uh, yeah. Uh, logical. Uh, good luck with the testing. Thanks, Dad. Good luck with the gardening. Okay, now I'm really ready to test my latest Android upgrade. Hands in walkie-talkie mode. And Nick! Time for test number one. Over. Got it. Nick to hand. Please come see me in the Android engineering bay. Over. Success! Eyes, keep your eyes on hand. <laughs> Tron, only the most amazing toy in the world. It can spin, it can flip, it can pop a wheelie, and it makes sound too. It took us about three birthdays and two months allowance to save up. How do you operate it? With its remote control. Oh, it's just like our walkie-talkie technology. Uh, I don't think so. Walkie-talkies are cool for spy stuff, but remote controls are for making the Fastotron do awesome moves. I just meant that they work on the same principle. <laughs> they both use radio waves to send messages through the sky. That's amazing. <laughs> Let's play. Yay! My turn. No, uh, me first. Boys, boys, boys. We've talked about this. Turns go from oldest to youngest. That means... As the oldest, I... I get the first turn! <laughs> Grandma! Well, you are definitely the oldest. <laughs> Thank you. Now, what should my first move be? I got my walkie-talkie message. 
But now, you gotta find me in town. <laughs> Cold. Warmer. Same warmness. humans going. It mostly stays inside our body, but it can leak out if we get a scrape or a cut. Nick, how did that happen? I must have scratched my knee when I tried to get away from Han's claw. No biggie, Han. It doesn't hurt. That much. I'll go get you some bandages for my house. They've got unicorns on them. Unicorns? They glow in the dark, too. Let's get your scrape cleaned up. Then we'll figure out what's gone into hand. <gasps> Who broke it? Garth. I didn't. The batteries ran out. Grandma's inside getting more. Cool. I'll be right back, and you're all mine, Fastertron. All mine. Whoa! Are you in pain, Nick? Nothing I can't handle. Now for some disinfectant spray to clean the cut to make sure it doesn't get infected. Ow! Okay, that hurt. Explain to me what happened with hand again. We were playing hot and cold. Hot and cold? You know, that game where you tell someone if they're hotter or colder based on how close they are to something. That's fun. Well, yes, it can be, until a giant android freaks out on you. Let's give hand a diagnostic checkup to see if we can figure out what went wrong. Where do we do that? Cold! <laughs> Even colder. Oh, this is fun. Did you get your bandages, Shanae? Because we're getting all batteried up and ready for action. <laughs> okay. Now, whose turn is it now? It's supposed to be my turn now. Okay. Thanks. Not so fast, Shania. You went to the junkyard. You gave up your turn. Whatever. I get two turns when I get back then. Nuh-uh. Uh-huh. Nuh-uh. Take my turn now, then. 
Or something? What is sick? Sick is something that makes people feel bad. Like a cold or the flu or a stomachache. For an android, sick is when something messes up with your programming. Like a computer virus or a flaw in your system. What's that sound? That's a sound handmade before she freaked out the last time. I suggest you both move to another part of the room. Go! Oh, I suggest you move now. The suggestion! choice but to power her down. But Dad! This is not the time for a healthy debate. Uh, Hans, too dangerous to leave her like this. But Dad, none of the androids have ever been powered down before. What if she loses her memory in the process? The hand we know could be gone forever. Watch to an extreme situation. You can 
power her back up as soon as you find out what's wrong. But I can't test anything on her when she's like this. I'm sorry, Anne, but I can't have hand endangering your safety. Or Nick and Shania's. Get back to me when you have a workable hypothesis. Oh. He's so unfair. Mm. We need to review the facts. But how can we review the facts if Han's memory could be gone forever? Shania, it's not going to help Han to be emotional. But how can we not be emotional? We just have to focus on helping Han. But we've already done a diagnostic check, and that didn't help. What else can we do? Sometimes it helps to retrace your steps. What was the first time Han had an incident? Hmm. The first time she acted out of control was right after we added her new walkie-talkie upgrade. Which works by sending messages through the air using radio waves. Hmm. But I still don't know how it all links together. My grandma says if you can't figure something out, it sometimes helps to take a break. You have no idea how many turns I have to give up to get it over here. <laughs> and actually, it's my turn now, Anne. You've kind of been hogging it. Thanks. <laughs> Anne, does that spin remind you of anything? <laughs> This. I am really good, aren't I? <laughs> no. Well, yes, you are. But Han was doing that move before, too. <gasps> Han was copying me? No. You were controlling her. Hmm? Remote control toys work because the controller sends messages over radio waves to the toy. I think Han's walkie-talkie mode was picking up the Fastotron's messages. How are we gonna test that? Faster, please. Pal, I am going as fast as I can. You know, Anne should have called you pushy little android. P-L-A, hmm? Guys, I'm guessing you have a workable hypothesis. We do. Okay. We just have to test it. All right. Hi, are you recording? Radio waves test number one. We thought our problem was that hand was out of control. But now we think Han was actually being controlled by a remote-controlled toy nearby. The Fastotron! Both walkie-talkies and remote-controlled toys use radio waves to send messages. Our hypothesis is that Han's walkie-talkie mode picked up the Fastotron's messages and made her act out. Sounds working so far. To test our hypothesis, we removed Han's walkie-talkie mode and attached it to Webby One. Mm. This way, we can see if it picked up the Fastotron's messages without putting any of us in danger. Shania, you ready to show us your moves? Always. <laughs> What do you think, Dad? I think it's self-evident. The Fastotron is nifty. <laughs> and Han was being controlled by that remote control. <laughs> yes! And that means... 
you can power hand back up. Yes! On one condition. No more walkie-talkie modes on the androids. Deal. Thanks, Dad. Boom. <laughs> I really hope Han didn't lose any of her memories. Emergency hand power-up sequence. Protocol Omega-8. Pow, initiate. Uh, affirmative. Protocol Omega-8 complete. And... And... Remember me? mode is making you freak out. So we got rid of it. And if I ever have to send you a message from far away, I'll just give you a normal walkie-talkie. Sound good? <laughs> hey guys, check this out. What's better than the Fastotron? <laughs> the Webby Fastotron! I like it! I got the worst turn! Actually, Han should go first. I go second. Third! No fair. Fourth! Boom! Maggie Clegg, and you're watching Local Talk. Why is the alarm going off? I was just tracking something in the sky. It's coming closer, and that's a meteorite. Let's go. Uh, where are you going? You heard your mom. The meteorite hunt is on. Why don't you take eyes? He already knows where it is. I guess we could hide him in the car. Yes, eyes. Do you know where it landed? I, which way should we go? I? Eyes? Where did eyes go? Hi, I'm Craig Bartlett, and I'm the creator of Hey Arnold. I'm Francesca Marie Smith, and I'm the voice of Helga G. Pataki. I'm Olivia Hack, and I play Rhonda Wellington Lloyd. I'm Andy McAvee, and I play Phoebe Heyerdahl. Lane Torn, the original Arnold. And, and we're, we're the cast, cast of Hey Arnold, Arnold and, and you're, you're watching Celeb Secrets TV. TV. Class, we've been selected to go to San Lorenzo. We won! Isn't it the same San Lorenzo where your parents disappeared? Uh, the idea was we were going to pick it up where it left off, and it left off in an unintentional cliffhanger, which was that Arnold finds a map at the end of the journal, as you'll recall. There's a, an episode that was really was written and, and made as the very last episode of the regular series where Arnold finds his dad's journal, and in the very back of the page there's a map. So he goes, Grandma, Grandpa, I found a map. And then the music goes, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> and then crickets for 15 years. <laughs> and and uh, so that's super cool that, I you know, this was a project we'd been working on. Uh, Ramey Muskies, who's one of our uh, co-directors of the project, he and I were doing development art, and, and I was working on scripts. Uh, 2000, 2001, 2002. And then it, then it was put in a box and put away. 
So we are picking it up where we left off. Arnold has a map. Time has passed. The kids, the kids are a little older. And they're like it's they're they're finishing up fifth grade. As you can see, they're they're fifth graders now, about about to start sixth grade. And uh, that's that's where our story begins. And it's a huge adventure, epic. They 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 leave. They, everyone gets taken out of their comfort zone and, and into some really crazy hot water. And, and uh, so it's a it's a it's a big move. I think, I think my favorite part though about coming back for the movies is just that we had such a magic experience when we recorded this in the 90s. There was just something about the right people in the right place and just the things that went on in the recording studio. We, we created this really magical experience. And I think having the perspective now, I do feel how special that was. When you're in it, it just feels like you're having the best time ever. But when you have that perspective, you realize how special it was. And I think coming back and now creating a different kind of magic at this point in our lives with the love that we have for these characters is just a, a new wave of this sort of magic of the right people in the right place with the right script and, and now with, with fans involved. So that was my favorite part. I think the fact that um, that Phoebe and Gerald were not supposed to have a crush on each other is kind of a little bit of a secret. It was something that Jamil and I made up <laughs> when we were ad-libbing in like episode two or three or something like that, really early on. And then uh, the fact that he revealed, which I didn't even know, that he had an actual crush. Oh, he had a big time. crush on me. I, had I didn't know that either. Back then, I didn't know that. Oh. He made it very <laughs> yes, he did. That's right. When, we, when you guys did your interview for this flat. Oh. Arnold! Arnold! Yeah, yeah, Arnold! We get it! I'm a kid of the 80s, so My Little Pony was the most exciting thing at one point in my life. Ooh. Now, don't get too excited. Any preconception I had of the idea of My Little Pony was sort of obliterated. It's really about female empowerment. My Little Pony has been on TV for so long, and they've had some big moments. This day will just who you are. The pressure is intense. It's almost too much for any single pony to handle. Ah! Who would have thought? We are very excited that a toy launched over 30 years ago Look! would culminate into a TV series so popular. I grew up with singing the jingle to My Little Pony. That was pretty great. And it's funnier than what I remember. Whoa! that it would make its way to the big screen. What My Little Pony really is about is loyalty and friendship. The flowers, the ponies, the blues. When I first was called to say, would you want to do a My Little Pony movie? I said, absolutely. <laughs> oh, time for my seaweed wrap. This is the story of how six little ponies We're all behind you, Twilight. began an epic journey that would take them far away <laughs> From the only home they've ever known. We'll have to leave Equestria. And into cinemas across the globe. Hello, I'm Andrea Libman. But you might know me better as the voice of Fluttershy. You seem tense. Do you want to talk about it? And Pinkie Pie. Excellent idea, Rainbow Dash. From My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. To make a film like My Little Pony the movie, it all starts with great characters and great storytelling. To accomplish that, it takes a very special group of people to bring it all to life. When I first heard of My Little Pony, I thought, oh, it's going to be a nice, cute, sweet show. And then when I saw the script, and I was like, no, this is much more epic. This is much bigger, broader world. I think we just got too big for the small screen. When we first started, we were really trying to think about a story that would work better on the big screen, that would take our characters somewhere that you hadn't seen them go in the show. We've done a lot of episodes at this point, and we really rallied around the idea that they would leave Equestria, which is their home. It's the world they know so well. It's the world the audience knows so well. So when we went to break the movie, we thought, how do we get them out of their comfort zone so we can really challenge them? And that just seemed the perfect way to do it. So it was a really great time to make a movie and just these characters to an even wider audience. We could definitely use a friend out here. 
we did what you told us, and that's what made her realize that we were ponies worth saving. Now is a great time to turn the series into a movie uh, because we have such an amazing fan base. And we've got people of all ages. I've met lots of families that are connecting and love watching the show together. It's expanded to grown-ups and cosplay people. These fans are divine! One of the biggest reasons why there is such a big, diverse fandom for this show is the positive message that it portrays. I'm so sorry. I was wrong to... I'm sorry, too. Friends mess up sometimes. Somebody for everybody. Maybe you're a Fluttershy. Maybe you're a Rainbow Dash. You know, you have a friend that's a Pinkie Pie. Well, how about a big warm hug from a grateful pony friend? And the stories people can really relate to while being super entertaining and fun to watch. It's a festival of friendship. Together we are one. A day we will never forget. This show has always blown me away with how uh, it affects people, how it moves people, how it inspires them creatively. But when the fans found out that we were doing a feature film that would be coming out, the countdown has started. They cannot wait. I got so many tweets that were just like, is this really happening? We can't believe it's happening. If you ever sat through an episode of My Little Pony and just wished you could just walk into it, this is that immersive experience. You mean that dreadful unicorn with the broken horn? You bet it is. I'll show you. It's so incredible to be a, a part of something that's just keeps growing and growing and to have an actual movie where these characters are going to be brought to life on the big screen is just really exciting. We got to go back there and fight. You saw the size of those goons? You seriously want to go back? I'm super excited that they involved all the original cast to be in the film. Okay, fine. Then deliver us to Mount Eris. And then added some pretty cool celebrities to it. What is the point of having power if you don't really use it? There's all kinds of twists and turns and new characters and new worlds. And people are going to get so excited when they realize how epic this film is. I'm sure it's going to be a huge, huge event. We just got our cupcakes handed to us by the worst party crasher ever! We gotta go back there and fight! You saw the size of those goons! You seriously want to go back? So now what? It's a great opportunity for our main cast, who's been on the TV show, to take their characters to this next level. That's when you ride, Emma! Woohoo! Go, 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 go! Yes! All right! We did it! And they've really been a part of this process with us, too, because they know their characters so well. They've had years to develop these characters. Oh, I think this is going to be a fabulous movie. To see everything get developed on the big screen, incorporating so many characters, old and new, there's something for everybody. And you'll be sitting on the edge of your seat, for sure. <laughs> the tone of the film is really fun because it's varied, and it's pretty seamless how they all interweave with each other. But you've got a lot of humor, actually. Your main evil Storm King is sort of petulant and and really funny and foot stamping. This place, it seems a little too, oh, I don't know, cute! And then you've got my character, Tempest, who's a lot darker and more frightening and sinister. How about we start with your complete and total surrender? And then you've got these lighter, frolicking moments with the ponies, and I think that we're trying to bring a lot of humor to the film and for it not to be too simplistic you know I think that there's deeper meanings going on and so it's just that delicate balance of finding those themes and also trying to make something really really entertaining for people welcome back you know to me one of the most exciting things about My Little Pony the movie is all the great new characters we meet on our adventure including one awesomely hilarious new villain I'm so totally over the cute pony thing my character is called the Storm King, and he's the baddie in this film. It's kind of what I do. When I first saw the drawing, I, I thought that he was very cool. Let's get the storm started! Ooh, hey, that's good. I should trademark that. He has a wide range of behaviors. He's a bit odd, prone to temper tantrums. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody got a lozenge? It won't be a problem. And who, may I ask, are you? <laughs> I play Tempest, and she is the antagonist of the film. Tempest! <laughs> She's definitely turned her back on the idea that friendship is magic. Their magic can be taken from them, and I'm the one who's going to take it. 
She's almost in a suit of armor and she's quite sinister and dark with this broken horn, you know, and there was something quite impactive about that image of her. And so I was excited that I got to play the other side of what it is to be a pony. No! Look what I found! I was selfishly really excited about Princess Skystar, but I totally did not tell you that. To look at her and see those big, beautiful eyes. But she's just so cute, and she has a cute little pink flower in her hair. And she does have a little bit of a pompadour. Ta-da! <laughs> I'm so glad I saved you guys. I'm totally taking you to my mom. She's been alone, and she's finally bringing a group where she lives, and she's so proud. This is where I live! Wow! wow. And she's the daughter of Queen Novo. I'm just the queen. Don't mind me. I play Queen Novo. Well, I guess the pearl is out the oyster now. The queen of an underwater pony kingdom. Seriously. Queen Nova was a hippogriff, and after escaping the Storm King, took her pony tribe down underwater in her kingdom. Well, of course I know. I'm the queen. I know everything. She doesn't take any nonsense and will do everything in her power to protect her family. Brave and majestic, laying it on a bit thick, don't you think, dear? Come on! I'm playing Captain Solano. She's a parrot and she's a rock star. The pirates were the rock stars of their era. Now start paddling, you scurvy sky cat! Land ho! And what I liked about Captain Solano is that she cares for her crew. Oh! She's a responsible and thoughtful and empathetic leader. Secure the rigging! Lock down the cargo! Prepare for impact! Ponies of Equestria! My name is Grubber. Some people call me Grub, but you call me Grubber. <laughs> I play Grubber. He's um, vertically challenged. Uh, he loves food. A little sponge cake to lighten it up? They wrote this character after they met me because I love food. But I got one word for you. Sponge cake. And I'm also vertically challenged. Is that an apple tart? Okay, can you just put that down right here? It was fun because it was this, it's this little guy. <laughs> Welcome, my little ponies. Must have been a long journey. Please, please, put your hooves up. I play this cool cat named uh, Capper, who kind of comes from uh, the other side of the track. Capper's the name. Charming's my game. I've gotten to add elements of my own personality and then grab from, from other places. I've got something that'll magically erase all my debt. He's handsome. He's a handsome, handsome man. It's a shame that he has to be animated. He should just be in the movie. You are awesome! That's it, right? We didn't make friends with any pony else? No My Little Pony adventure would be complete without great songs. One of the really exciting things that comes with doing this movie is now we're moving into an opportunity to work with live orchestra and a lot of live musicians. There is lots of music in the film. All the ponies love to sing. song in the film is obviously Rainbow Dash's song. Sometimes the pressure gets you down and the clouds are dark and gray. Just kick them off and let the sun shine through. The songs in My Little Pony always seem to carry the story forward or bring in some sort of celebration and it's not any different in the film. I am the princess of friendship, but that is more than just a crown. It's a promise to bring ponies together And never let any pony down You got this, we got this together But the ponies you already know aren't the only ones that get to carry a tune. Many of the film's original songs are actually sung by our new characters. Best of all, multi-platinum recording artist Sia stepped in not only to record a new original song, but to lend her voice and her likeness to a brand new character. Songbird Sammy! Yeah. Hiya! I'm looking for the pony in charge. The 
the song One Small Thing <laughs> might be my favorite because think about it, I'm 4'11. One small thing, it's a good place to start. Kristen Chenoweth sings it as a duet with Pinkie Pie, who's also one of our favorite singing ponies. One small thing does seem like a lot. All right, now since you're here, let's see what we can do. Swim with the flow until you go together, me and you. It's really about all the things that are big in life that we can conquer and that we can do and that are magical and bigger than us. And friendship, and that's what the song is about. It was awesome. I had no idea it would be this fun or challenging. You know, they got some real, real great songwriters on this piece. We wanted each song in the movie to be a little bit different and definitely have a distinctive quality. And with Capper, for example, we were like, okay, let's do something that we have never done before. Let's give him a tango. I'm the friend that you need when you're lost and don't know what to do. I'm the friend you need is uh, my character's kind of introduction to these young ponies, trying to get them to come over to my side. Trust me. I don't know if we should trust him. You need a bud to spot the danger, a pal to stop the creep, a chum and not a stranger to assist. These ponies, I've never seen characters like mine in this new crazy world. Cause I'm the friend you need. He's a friend. He's a friend, He's a friend indeed. He's a friend indeed. Lovely. I'd love for everybody out there to know what I can really do. I think we all felt very excited and fortunate when Emily Blunt came on. Not only am I a huge fan of her as an actress, but she's also a tremendous singer. Daniel wrote not only an amazing song for me to sing and such a powerhouse moment for Tempest in the movie. There's something always very special about writing a villain song, and by the end you really understand what her character has gone through. The best way to survive is all alone. I just think the song is really soaring and spectacular. Come now, little one, open up your eyes. Open up your eyes. To be able to be a part of a movie where you get to sing for kids, I think it's really beautiful. I feel the light. When they mentioned that there was going to be pirates in the movie, I said, we need a pirate song. Captain Solano and her crew have forgotten what it was like to be yourself, to be authentic. Zoe Saldana felt very uncomfortable with singing, and then she came in and blew all of our minds because it turns out she has this fabulous voice and did an absolutely beautiful job. To break the shackles free and start living like a brave and it's just about remembering what it was like to just have fun and be yourself. Being yourself is awesome. Awesome! That was fun! Can we do it again? Of course, we couldn't bring our ponies to the big screen without an amazing team of top-notch animators. And for those talented individuals creating the immersive worlds and amazing characters of My Little Pony the movie meant facing their biggest challenge yet. We are doing it, you guys! Visually, with animation from the TV series, the biggest shift that we've had is going from Flash, that this is usually the program we use on the TV show, Adobe Flash, to Toon Boom Harmony, which is a whole different animation software, and we had to completely rebuild everything from scratch. We know you're up to the task. In the TV show, you know, they're ponies, but everything scaled down to their size, but we wanted to make that jump, so when they left Equestria, we didn't want to make anything pony size. We wanted everything to be huge and then to be small. We're ready to kick some booty. <laughs> what we've been able to do because this is a theatrical release is just stunning. It's gorgeous. It's leaps and bounds beyond what you would see on the TV series in terms of animation style, richness of color and lighting, and it's all about making it a really big, immersive experience. <gasps> You're right. I'm just going to try harder. At this stage in the film, everything is very collaborative. Nothing is really standalone. We can always turn to our other teammates. Worrying. And say, hey, you have an idea, or hey, I'm stuck on this, or hey, is this funny? <laughs> There's a 
a whole lot of people that find this really important, like they love it and they, they it's a big part of their lives and you feel responsible. It's just amazing to see it all come to life and all the ideas that get bounced around. All the love and heart that went into it is just, yeah, it's phenomenal. The next level of animation is really about the subtle acting and the less limitations in shots and integrating more three-dimensional environments. It's just getting it to feel like the TV show, but way better. <laughs> we're making a movie we get to actually make it bigger bolder better go where we've never gone before we get to meet people beyond the borders of equestria so you were about to toss us overboard and you stop for a lunch break when audiences go to see my little pony the movie they can expect humor they can expect heart they can expect amazing musical numbers but it's also an epic adventure and it's a real spectacle and this is a hero's journey i'm excited just worlds that we've never seen before. The ponies in a brand new environment facing all kinds of new challenges. <laughs> and that's the way I always pictured the show, that this could easily be expanded into a feature film. So it was, to me, a bit of a natural progression. I hate epic adventures. <laughs> I hope that little kids that are being introduced to My Little Pony when this movie comes out and they're going with their older brother or sister or cousin or parent that they see that too and take it with them. They're going to be really thrilled to see the multi-dimensionality of the animation with the latest effects. It's going to be an amazing treat. I think they can expect to be surprised. There's much more to these little ponies than you think. There's a message, there's a storyline that is both for adults and, and the children that we all can use and learn from. Audiences can expect to feel the daring, exciting world that My Little Pony has created all these years. It's gonna warm your heart in the end. Oh, it's such a good story. Don't you dare tell them. It's hard to find things that my kids can see. I thought, here's my little opportunity to do something for my little ponies. I can't wait to bring all my nieces. Hopefully they're going to think I'm cool after this. By me being a part of My Little Pony, I'll be able to sit down as soon as the film comes out with my kids and watch it with them. And I hope they like it. Come on, let's show these little ponies how it's done. Well, it's going to be so awesome. I think audiences are going to be like, yes, please, pro hunt. Just get ready. Hold on to your horses, because you're in for a real ride. And there you have it. After more than 30 years in our hearts and homes, and after seven seasons of friendship and adventures on television, the ponies are finally gracing the silver screen. I'm Andrea Lindman, and on behalf of our entire cast and crew, as well as Pinkie Pie, Fluttershy, and the rest of the ponies in Equestria, thank you for joining us on this magical journey.
Yeah.